Good morning, and so welcome to our TCC Touchpoint, and uh, Pastor Steve is not with us today, and so I'm just going to share a few thoughts and uh, have a word of prayer. <coughs> But to begin with, we'd like to I'd like to start with some announcement. First thing is that tonight there is no uh, youth group meeting this week and no elementary children meeting. And so that will be resuming next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. But tonight there's no meeting. And... Um, Tonight at 6.30, there's a Kairos gathering led by Tim and Kathy Pump. And so just seeking the Lord for his move and his goodness. And then also there's we have a, been a, having a special announcement here. And the History in the Baking, a Christmas play written by Sarah Joy and Elsie Erholtz will be performed this Saturday and Sunday, December 11 and 12 at 2 o'clock p.m. at TCC. And so just be aware of that. And tickets will go on sale beginning of November. And so let's keep that in mind <clears throat> and clear our calendars. Hallelujah. And so then tomorrow night I, I do a Zoom Bible study. And at 7.30, Thursday night, 7.30, you're welcome to join us. And then upcoming events, Carol and Ronnie Ruano, our missionaries in Guatemala, will be with us on Sunday, October 24. And so let's uh, be prepared for that. She always has a, Carol always has a great word from the Lord. Very strong, very good. And then Wednesday, October 27th, we have the Hallelujah Night and lots of games, treats, and prizes. This is for the children. So instead of the Halloween things, we're doing the Hallelujah Night. It's always well attended and a great time. And so I don't believe there was one last year because of the issues in society, but <clears throat> we're got it up and going again this year so we just ask the Lord to bless that time so let me just take a few minutes here today and uh, talk to you about how important it is to agree with God and hallelujah In 1 John 3, 1, and this is from the Weymouth translation, see what marvelous love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called God's children. And that is what we are. And so I just want to focus on that little statement, that is what we are. And so John here is giving us a, a, a dynamic fact that we have been called God's children. We've been made God's children. And then he sets his heart in agreement with that, and that is what we are. And so this is one of the great truths of our heart, of our life, that we choose to agree with God in what he says about us. And so our, our world, our flesh, our history, you know, may have put us down, maybe different things that would try to discourage us, but this is what God says. He says, we are his children, and that is what we are. So let's just say that today. That is what I am. That is what I am. I am a child of God, not because I feel like it, not because, you know, it would be nice to be that, but because that is what God has declared. Amen. And so one of, today I just want to explore one of the things that God says about us. And we want to examine this a little bit 
closer. And I, I went through some of these things a few weeks ago in our Zoom class, but kind of briefly highlighted some things. And so today I just want to go a little, little bit, uh, dig a little bit deeper. And God calls us believers. We are believers. Amen. And we'll examine what that means here in a second. But in 1 Thessalonians 2.10, the Apostle Paul says, You are witnesses, and so is God, how devotedly, uprightly, and blamelessly we behave toward you believers. And so he is looking at the church, and he, he calls the church believers. And that is what they, what they, what they were. That's what, who we are. We are believers. In John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. And so, as, the, as children of God, we believe in his name. We are believers. Galatians 3.5 so then, does he who provide you with the Spirit and work miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by the hearing with faith? Amen. And so let's just examine that verse a little bit. So then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and work miracles among you do it by the by the works of the law or by hearing with faith or one translation the hearing of faith and so this is in the genitive case and so it's possession it shows possession our faith possesses hearing but also our hearing possesses faith you can look at it either way and so hearing the faith, uh, our hearing here, our hearing possesses faith. Not only can we hear the words of God and catch the concepts of the kingdom, but our hearing also has the built-in capacity to believe and to receive these truths into our being and make them a living reality in our experiences. Wow, that is really a powerful statement. And so, the hearing of faith. And so, God has made us, he has made our inner man to be able to hear his words, to understand, to catch the concepts of his kingdom. But our hearing also has the built-in capacity to believe and to receive these truths into our being. And when we receive them by faith, make them part of our inner man, they, they then begin to work out through our life and become a living reality in our experiences. And you know, I, I love this a few verses later here in Galatians 3. It says, So then, those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. Wow, wouldn't you like to have that tag on your life? Wouldn't you like God to stamp that upon you? That capitalizes who he sees you as. Here he said he saw Abraham as the believer. And we are the, you know, we have come into that same faith. We are believers, and this is how God sees us. And so when our heart accepts him and welcomes him and embraces him, hallelujah, God sees our spirit as those who believe and take hold of the word and never let go. Abraham took hold of the word. He had a lot of issues he had to deal with in his life. He wasn't perfect, but he was always a believer. He responded to the the word of God in obedience and it became such a part of him that he naturally just walked it out and he had to hang on to that to those words for 
decades at some sometimes, and yet he didn't waver. The Bible says he didn't waver in his faith, and that was the power of the, of his heart receiving the word of God. That it became a part of his inner man, and so his hearing possessed faith. His heart of faith possessed the ability to hear and rightly discern the voice of God. Hallelujah. And, and so Ab Abraham believed God that was reckoned to him as righteousness in verse 7 of Galatians 3. Therefore be sure, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are the sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, all the nations will be blessed in you. And so this was the beginning of this hearing of faith in the world. As far as, you know, he, he became the father of faith and it was passed on. You know, and Noah believed God. I mean, but yet God saw Abraham as the father of this kind of faith. And so then those who are of faith are blessed with Father with Abraham, the believer. And this is who you are. You are the believer. You are a believer. Hallelujah. And take confidence. You don't need someone else to believe for you. God has invested. He's implanted this great thing into your spirit. You are a believer. I want to say it again. You are a believer. You can take the word of God. You can take his voice. You can take the realities of the spiritual realm. The things that the Holy Spirit makes alive in your heart. You can take them. You can embrace them. You can stand upon them. And you can dedicate your life to the truth that God is giving us. You are a believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's exciting, isn't it? In Matthew eleven fifteen, just a very you know, Jesus said this many times. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, and so that's almost like a command, isn't it? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so Jesus is commanding our ears to open up, and and for this operation of possessiveness my ears hear my heart responds my faith responds and my ears hear and this is a marvelous way that real genuine lasting faith is burst with birth within us hallelujah and so my ears are open to the voice of God my spirit is responsive to what this faith is providing. There's a couple more verses here today. Listen to what the Apostle John said in 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so that's a, you know, very definite statement. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you can't love the things of the world and also love the Father. There's no place for mixture. You know, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And so there's no place or anything else within us as far as the love goes. It's, it's all wrapped up in the Father. And when we love the Father, then the Bible says we love the, his children as well. And so it opens up our life to a lot of great, positive, wonderful things when we set our love upon the Father completely. But if we try to have mixture in our life, the love of the Father can't coexist, John is saying here, with a love for the world. And then listen to what he says. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, 
and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And so there's such a diametrically opposed issues that just don't stand the test of kingdom light. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. And let me just read a little, the Amplified here. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh craving, craving for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources, or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. <clears throat> and I just thought that pride of life was interesting. Assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things. And so, you know, God has made a way for us, but it comes from heaven. Our heart must be bound to him, bound to his kingdom, bound to his spirit. And and we, we, we don't have assurance in our own ability, but in God's ability and what he can do through us. Hallelujah. And the stability of earthly things, you know, we just have seen that shaken so much over the past couple of years. You know, we can't have faith, we can't have trust in, in the stability of earthly things. Look how quickly things can change. And I've, I've, uh, I've lived in Canada for 10, 11 years or something, but right now in Canada, we have just that you know, I've heard some from some people that you can't go into a restaurant unless you have a wear a mask, or if you had, or more than that, even you have to have a report or have a slip that shows that you've had a vac vaccination. And you know, a few years ago, we wouldn't even thought of such a thing. But so just look at how quickly things can change, and our world is not stable. But our God is the rock. He will make a way for us. Amen. And then John goes on and says, The world passes away and disappears, and with it the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But he who does the will of God and carries out his purposes in his life abides forever. Wow, what a promise. So we abide in God, we do the will of God, we put our hands and our heart into carrying out his purposes for our life. And he says we abide, we, in his life, we abide forever. And so we're in, unmovable. And we just, we'll be right in that stream when Jesus comes again and we'll be welcoming him face to face. Hallelujah. And so, I just want to contrast that then with First John five, four. First John five verse four, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? but he who believes, or one translation, only he who believes, that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we are believers in Jesus. We have set our heart, our faith, our life upon him, and, and we overcome the world. This, this believing stance that God has put within my heart causes me to overcome all the dictates of the flesh and the world. And you know, it, you know, we all look back in our life and we probably have had issues that we've had to work through and uh, struggle with a bit, but yet that abiding strength is in our heart and he's causing us to overcome. He's causing us to, to take the high road. He's causing us to say no to the worldly things. And the only way to have true victory over the world in the flesh and the devil is through faith in Jesus Christ to believe in the Son of God. 
And it's so marvelous, you know. It's just so marvelous that God provides for us this kind of a victory. And, you know, just yesterday I had a call from a lady in Canada. And she had hurt her back. And so I, I just said, well, let's pray. <clears throat> and so we just took a moment and approached the throne and we prayed, and often when I pray, you know, I can, how God reveals things to me is that as I pray, I can feel within my spirit, within my inner man, what, you know, how the waves of the spirit and the waves of glory are working. And, and I will feel like uh, different points where it's like a, an increase. It's like an impartation. It's like a, you just feel this ugh, going out from me, and I'll often I'll say, "There it is." And I, so I, when we were praying, I think four times I said, "There it is, there it is." I mean, you don't. I don't try to say that. It just comes up out of me. And I, as, as I'm alive unto God and He, and aware of the dynamics of the Spirit of God within me, you know, He chooses us to be ones that move and release the things of the Spirit. And we can learn how God wants to cooperate with Him, how He wants us to cooperate with Him, and we can refine uh, refine those things and become more and more accurate. And so anyway, we started, after we, we prayed for a few minutes and I felt these releases in my spirit going out to her, and she said, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> she could feel God working in her spine and working in her body. She could feel a change at the moment. And then she just started to laugh because it felt good. Hallelujah. And so it's interesting. You know, we overcome the world by believing. And we have not only in our own personal life we overcome, but then we have something to give to others. When we walk in this way, we have something to give to others that is connected to God and connected to his great power. And we can move with the Spirit. Who is he, the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we can learn, you know, all about faith and the gifts of the Spirit and the promises of God. But underneath it all, it's the person of Jesus Christ. It's the person of Jesus Christ. It's the person of Jesus Christ that we have a living connection with, a living faith in. Uh, we believe in him. We believe in his name. And this is the life of God that he has destined us to flow with. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I just want to take a moment today and pray and if you're hearing this not live but later just hook up your faith just hook up your faith God can do miracles God can do miracles and uh, I just want to pray with uh, anyone that is not physically doing well today or there's a number of people I've heard that have been uh, having COVID issues still and so let's agree together let's pray together that this thing will be broken over God's people especially hallelujah so bow your heart with me now and as we and lift up our spirit unto the Lord Father God I approach your glorious throne now declaring that you are the restorer of our life you you restore us to health. You restore us, Lord. Jesus Christ paid the price for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You are so beautiful. In Jesus' name now. So just, if, if you're going through some symptoms or if you're facing some things, just open up your heart. And as I pray, just receive his grace, he's right there with you. He's right, if you're a believer, he's right there in you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, 
and lift up the COVID issue, Lord, over so many of your people right now. In Jesus' name, that spirit of infirmity, that spirit that's attacking and laying hold and trying to bring uh, control and destruction over lives. In Jesus' name, I cast down that spirit now. I command you to bow your knee to the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you now for stre stretching out your healing hand and entering into the bodies of those that are dealing with these things. I thank you, Lord, that your healing grace and warmth and strength is flowing. Thank you that your spirit is administrating what Jesus Christ paid for, the broken body of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By his stripes we are healed and made whole. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for administrating that grace now. And Father, I lift up every other issue. Those with back problems, now in Jesus' name, be whole. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, pain and weakness go. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I declare that your word and your life and your spirit are more than enough for us. You make a way for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I give you praise, Lord God. And so now just receive it. Just say, I receive it, Lord. And I am a believer. I believe that if two of us agree as touching anything on this earth, then it shall be done for me. I believe that your Holy Spirit is working in my physical body. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you, he will quicken your mortal body. Amen. He will make it full of life. I believe. I believe you're working. I believe. I believe. I set myself in agreement with your words, Father. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And so this coming Sunday, Angie and team will lead us in worship. Angie Modry, and good to see that she's back, being able to join in that function again. I will be bringing a message from God's Word. And we may talk about the glory of God. I'm not totally certain yet, but amen. There is no meal this week. So no meal, but amen. And so for giving, uh, your tithes and offerings, mail them to 10th Street Community Church. Make them out to TCC, P.O. Box 67, 10th Strike, Minnesota, 56683. Or give online at our TCC website, 10thStrikeChurch.com. 10thStrikeChurch.com. Amen. So God's blessing on your day. And rejoice, the healer is with you. Hallelujah. The healer is with you. He's with me, praise God. Have a great day.